Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Pointless Top 10, a short make top 10 list of the pointless things where we fly and buy this pointless statue in Booty Bay because inside pointless things are treasure. Let's begin. 10. Number 10 is the Goblin Garden located on Kazan, and I decided to put it at number 10 because I it it's not actually a garden, all right? It's more of like a yard than a garden, but I think it fits in with gardens pretty well. Because listen, I'm not about to do pointless top 10 yards because I don't even think there's enough yards, but... I genuinely love this place. Like, you've got the mechanical flamingos who are bobbing their heads back and forth. Like, I <laughs> I think I love the flamingos the most out of this whole area. Uh, you've got some goblins that are just laying on the ground, I think, dead. So that's <laughs> that's something. You've got these cola cans, which are the Kaja Cola, which is the stuff that goblins drink to give them ideas. In fact, Wowpedia says Kaja Cola is a common item found all over Kazan during the goblin starting experience. It is a carbonated beverage manufactured from distilling the juice out of priceless Kaja Mite. It was produced by the Kajaro Trading Company and using the item has the player yell out a random idea and it will increase your intellect by two for 10 minutes. So it's quite possible that some goblin drank one of these colas and was like, we need to make some goblin grass or something and then made the flamingos. Like, that's probably what happened. But either way, that's why the goblin garden is number 10. Nine. Number nine is the beer garden in Dalaran. And this is an alliance only area where they can sit down and drink beer. It's, it, that's literally it. <laughs> it's just a big garden. It's got some picnic tables set up. Uh, it's got a bunch of kegs all around and you can just sit here, chill out and drink. Uh, which is fantastic. I mean, this is, it's kind of like the World of Warcraft Oktoberfest area. Uh, I actually haven't even gone here during Brewfest. You know how they always have Brewfest stuff going on. I don't think I've ever been to this area during Brewfest. Like, maybe there's something special going on here. I actually don't know. Uh, if there's not, there should be. Because <laughs> this is an entire area focused around, like, Oktoberfest. So, uh, either way, it's a really cool area. You got all the trees, you got the tables, like I mentioned, you got hearthstone boards and cheese and all that stuff. You can even see some of the things you can buy right here. You got smoked elderhorn, you've got scallion kimchi, you got honey glazed ham, barley bread, some ales, like they got a whole bunch of stuff. And that's why the Dalaran Beer Garden is number nine. Hey, number eight is the Royal Garden, and it is located in Stormwind right before you go to the throne room, and it's got quite the history behind it. So back in Classic WoW, there was a whole bunch of spying going on with the Defias Brotherhood and some other stuff that was crazy. Then in Cataclysm, uh, Cenarian Emissary Jade Moon opened a portal in the garden to the Moonglade, which you can see right there. Then during Legion, the garden got overrun by fell magic and a bunch of demons. And then since then, there's been a bunch of meetings and other stuff that have happened here. But this garden has had a lot of things over the years occur in it. And it's also just a quaint little garden. There's like mushrooms and trees and bushes and animals walking around. And it's just a nice little place. So that's why the Stormwind Keep Garden is number eight. Seven. Number seven is the Shimmershade Garden. And the Shimmershade Garden is a small district located in the western portion of Suramar City. And it mainly consists of an open garden area with a fountain, shrubbery, and other flora native to Suramar. However, since the outbreak of the Nightfallen Rebellion within Suramar, the Shimmershade Garden has been largely occupied by demonic forces of the Burning Legion, as well as elements of the Duskwatch. In addition, the garden was notably frequented by a large number of loyalists of Grand Magistrix Alessandra. So even though there are demons walking around, with many of them ready to attack you, it's still a very relaxing place if you just kind of focus on all the plants and trees and stuff. I mean, look at this tree. This tree is literally a space tree. It's like you look up into it and you're looking into space. Like, that is, that's actually really cool. I also love how all the potted plants are glowing and then you got the lanterns and the flowers and the leaves all over the ground. It's just, it's a very tranquil, peaceful place without the demons. And that's why... It's number seven. Six. Number six are the Capital Gardens, located in Dire Mall West. And unlike the other gardens on this list, this is a bit more of a depressing garden area because these gardens used to be very lively and pristine and vibrant, and now they are gray and withered and depressed and overrun with treants and other stuff, but... It's still pretty cool to, you know, look and see how it would have looked, and I still think they look pretty cool now, even though there's a lot of, you know, broken pottery around and just sad trees and everything like that. But there are some really cool statues here, 
Uh, there's a lot of highborn stuff, like highborn statues, because the highborn lived here until their defeat and escape from Dire Maul. In fact, one cool thing I learned about Dire Maul is that the ruins stand strong because of ancient crafting techniques that bound arcane energy within the stone. So that's pretty neat, except for those creepy trees. Those are pretty freaky. And that's why the Capital Gardens are number six. Five. Number five is Shang Steed, or Stead Steed, I don't know how you say it, but... It's uh, where Shang Thunderfoot has his own little house, and he's got some flowers in the front, which is his nice little flower garden. Well, I think they're flowers, but uh, they look like it, and they're all fenced in. And then in the back, he's got his giant watermelon. Like, look at that massive watermelon, dude. Like, that is his entire garden. Like, his whole garden is just one big watermelon that he massages <laughs> and just rubs it down. He's just like, yes, watermelon. <laughs> You are mine, and I have grown you to be a very big watermelon, yes. That's actually word for word what he says. I'm not even making that up. That's just, he doesn't actually say it in the game, but I heard him, trust me. Uh, yeah, he's just growing a big-ass watermelon in his backyard. So, I was like, how could I not include this on the list, right? Like, he does have flowers, so that's kind of like a little garden, but then just the watermelon, just, it, it really caps it off. So, that's why Shang Steed, Stead Steed, is number five. Four. Number four is the Ravenholt Manor Garden, and this one's pretty cool. It's kind of hidden away up in the Alterac Mountains or Hillsbird Foothills, like in that area. And it's a rogue area, so outsiders are not really welcome here. But Simone Cantrell is the landscape architect, and she is the one that takes care of this garden that just has a bunch of different mushrooms, and it looks like swift thistles here. There's a scarecrow, and I'm pretty sure she is growing... Things that are used for rogue poison, if I had to, uh, you know, <laughs> take a wild guess. Plus, there's actually a quest at level 60 called the Perfect Poison in Silithus, and the reward for that is Simone's Cultivating Hammer. So I think that really does tie it all together to be like, yeah, she's growing stuff for poison, right? But it's a really nice garden, and she does a great job taking care of it. So that's why the Ravenholt Manor Garden is number four. Three. Number three is the Arboretum, and the Arboretum is a large grove that can be found on the eastern coast of the Jade Forest, and the Order of the Cloud Serpent have their base of operations here, along with ink makers that use pink petals that grow amongst the trees to make ink. I also love that there's all the bees and the beehives around here, and then there's this yak guy who's just chilling by the tree, and he's, I was gonna say reading, he's definitely not reading, he's just, he's just sitting there. <laughs> and I actually didn't know what an arboretum meant, I'd heard of an arboretum before, but I was like, what exactly is it? And an arboretum is a botanical garden devoted to trees, so it's just a big tree garden. And I really just love this place, this is another place where I would go here as just like a cozy spot to hang out, to chill, like that yak guy. Uh, I should really do a pointless top 10 cozy spots. That would be a really good one. But that's besides the point. This is a great place, great garden, and that's why it's number three. But before we move on, I want to take this opportunity to point out the Plants vs. Zombie farm area that people kept being like, this garden has to be on this list. This is not a garden. This is a farm. Can't get them confused. Two different things. And, uh, I'm actually gonna be reworking Pointless Top 10 Farm, so this will be on that list, too. And number two are the Gardens of Boralus, and these are easily some of my favorite gardens in the game because it's just a big area of garden. It's not, like, one little garden. Like, it is a vast garden area. There's flowers all over. There's people taking care of the flowers and people running around. There's people having tea parties in the garden. Uh, there's this big, like, hedge area. It's like a hedge maze. Uh, that's kind of in the center of the garden, but then there's like gazebo type things. I don't know what they're called. These like, uh, they're like greenhouses, but they're not a green. I don't know. It's, it's called something. And they got like the flowers growing on it and the ivy. There's little paths you can walk on. It's just, it's another place that's a very relaxing place to just be at and walk around and appreciate the art team again. Because once again, I think Battle for Azeroth has some of the best art in World of Warcraft. Like, it is phenomenal how good Battle for Azeroth's art team is. Like, I think if I had to rank art in World of Warcraft based on expansions, I'd probably put BFA at number one for the art, right? Like, I think it's just phenomenal. So, all that said, I love the Boralus Gardens, and that's why 
they're number two. One. And speaking of BFA, number one is in Stormsong Valley, and it's this little home in the mountains. Well, I guess it's kind of in the plain, in the mountains. Uh, it's, it's like kind of in the mountains, but more in the plains, and it's just surrounded by this lush garden. There's all these flowers. There's flowers on the house. There's flowers surrounding it. There's a little statue. There's a bunch of grass and these little paths. Like, this is number one because I love how cozy this is, you know? It's, it's just so... It's just so peaceful, right? And you're in this big area where there's war going on. Like, the BFA was supposed to be Alliance versus Horde and all this stuff. But then, in the midst of all that, there's just this little cozy house where there's some tea out front. You can have some tea. You can sit there. You can watch the bees buzzing around. You can see all the flowers. You can just take a deep breath and be like, man, this is nice, you know? And you just appreciate the moment. But that's what I love about this place. And that's why it's number one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you want some more Pointless Top 10s that are pretty relaxing like gardens, you can go watch Pointless Top 10 Windmills, or you can go watch Pointless Top 10 Lily Pads, both pretty relaxing. Also, consider supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash crendor, or by becoming a channel member. Okay? Okay. See ya!